Hi class, today what we're gonna do is talk about our first exercise in color. Um, the exercise is basically to use simultaneous contrast to make one color appear as two. Now the one thing about color that you have to remember is color always deceives. It continually deceives and color is actually affected by the colors, the other colors around it. And the more you understand how color works, the stronger your um, future designs will be because you'll be able to manipulate color to your own ends. So there are three characteristics of color or three uh, sort of classifications of color. One is hue and hue is basically just the, um, the color name itself. And they're based on the hues that you find around the color wheel. The second thing is value or the lightness or darkness of colors. Now in this first example right here, I've got um, a value scale that goes from more saturated to lighter. And this is called a tint because white is added. And you can see this fuchsia like um, goes up the spectrum to um, a more and more uh, pastel sort of pink. In the second example right here, you can clearly see the difference between saturation. So right here on the right hand side, I have a very saturated fuchsia. In the middle is a number five gray, which comes out of your um, color aid packet. And then on to the side of it is just a, a value of this fuchsia that's been grayed down or desaturated. And it is the equivalent value of the number five gray. The other thing to talk about with color is also coolness and warmth. So I've picked a series of really cool reds. That's basically what these are, these sort of fuchsia colors. But if you compare it to this orange, you can see that there's quite a bit of difference in terms of the temperature of color. So those things are important to keep in the back of your mind when you're starting to come up with your ideas of how you choose certain colors um, to transform themselves in the middle of this exercise. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. And I'm gonna come up with my first example right here. So what I've done is I've cut a piece of white paper, um, which is really a great help in this exercise because it allows you to get some sort of separation between the different colors. And the things that I was thinking about um, when I was picking my ground colors, basically, is I wanted to pick colors that actually had um, a, a fairly saturated um, uh, characteristic, although this is a little bit dulled out. You can see this is a little bit more saturated. Also, that represented different hues, so I wanted to contrast the hues. In the case of this particular example, I've used um, both a violet and an orange, which are almost complements on the color wheel. And, um, and then I started looking for a series of neutrals. Now I picked this neutral, and um, these neutrals are actually really important for this exercise because a lot of them are desaturated colors that actually have characteristics of both. So what I really like about this particular neutral, and I went through a number of them, um, you can see another one here. Here's like a green color and sort of this tan. This has uh, degrees of red in it. You can kind of see by um, the contrast to this particular piece. And it's cool, which um, refers back to this. So it's got red or orange in it, which is a little warm. And it also has a sense of coolness. You can see this particular green has a lot of yellow in it, but it's not very cool. It's actually quite warm. And so it probably work on the orange, but it's not gonna work so well on the, the violet. So what I did was I went through a whole series of different tests. So I just laid my neutral down on just the series of papers and I took my white paper and put it right on top. And what I'm trying to do is see degrees of difference in um, this color and see how it looks different on both grounds. And you can see there's sort of a shift that's occurring. Uh, this, this sort of gray green on the orange appears to be cooler and on this um, lavender, it seems to be a lot more yellow. And what's happening is the purple is taking the coolness or the blues out of this color in your mind or how you perceive it. And um, then this becomes warmer by comparison. The same thing is happening here. This orange is actually extracting the yellows or the warmth out of this kind of gray green. 
and um, what it's leaving behind is the cool. So that's that works, that sort of combination works, and you can see that I tried this on a number of different combinations. And you can see right now how important it is to have this white paper, so you can sort of switch. This color combination also works pretty well. If I switch it back to this orange, you know, you wanna play around sometimes. You know, this is a very saturated orange. This is a little less saturated, a little warmer. And what you can see clearly is there's a huge difference between this cool green and this sort of warmer yellow. What you're gonna do with this exercise is to create two um, um, finished exercises where you sort of experiment with these different um, color combinations. So I'm gonna move this aside and I'm gonna pick up another one which I thought was super successful and really kind of interesting. So I did the same thing here. I used my white cover sheet and I had a number of different um, kind of ranges of color and you can see that I experimented through the oranges on this side and on this side, I just went through these sort of deep or sort of yellow green. So I was thinking of warmth and sort of saturation. So what I arrived at when I came down to this was the ground colors of this yellow and this really bright green. Um, and then I laid this sort of gray yellow green on top of it. You can see that it, it doesn't really switch so much now, but then when I cover it with this paper, an amazing thing happens. It actually becomes um, a little grayer on this side and it's a little warmer on that side. Now, I think the color combination is pretty different um, and I think it works out pretty well, but it's not the most successful one I have. I'm gonna show you one other example. So with that in mind, I thought, okay, if I went with the green, maybe I could go with a little bit um, cooler blue. So you can see I have sort of a similarity. These are not the same. This is a little warmer. Um, and this is just a little bit cooler yellow. Um, the, value, the value shift on this is actually pretty extreme. You can see that's a much higher value than this. Um, and you have to sort of watch out. Sometimes these color shifts occur because of a strong value shift, um, and I don't really wanna see that happen too much, but I'm gonna lay this on here and just sort of see what happens. So I'm gonna lay this down, and what is remarkable is this particular yellow goes um, almost gray, cool, and on this side, it looks brighter than this yellow, which I think is really pretty interesting. And you can sort of see like a, a shift that occurs. You can see how the contrast with this sort of more saturated yellow actually pulls this out a little bit more. And let's just kind of see what happens just as an experiment. If I go with a super saturated um, yellow, you can see that the difference is still there, but maybe uh, it's pretty actually pretty stark. So it's really pretty interesting. Um, I love doing these experiments because um, it really gives you um, a really clear idea of the relative nature of color. I mean, it's one of the, it's the most complex of all the elements. I mean, line is the most basic element and it's contained in all the compositions you use, but color is a thing that always draws your, your eye and has, has a really strong emotional content. So I want you to experiment, come up with two designs that show um, simultaneous contrast where one color appears to be two by changing the grounds behind them.